Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This is this is Random Talks, episode two, and today, well, we're gonna feed share about a few uh, news. First off is uh, news from the cult leader Kibaloy. Philippine officials slammed the demands set by fugitive televangelist Apollo Kibuloy in exchange for his surrender. Kibuloy is once again urged to surface and face the criminal charges against him. The details from Sherry Ann Torres. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulla rejects the supposed condition set by Kingdom of Jesus Christ leader Apollo Kibuloy, telling the televangelist to just surrender. Aside from the Davao Court's issued arrest warrant for sexual abuse of minors and maltreatment, the DOJ is also awaiting a similar order from the Pasig City Regional Trial Court for qualified trafficking charges against Kibuloy. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. says Kibuloy is in no position to make demands. It seems to me a little bit uh, so I mean we, we will we will we will exercise all the compassion uh, and, uh, to to pastor Kibuloy. Marcos also has this to say about Kibuloy's attempt to link the US government to his cases in the Philippines. The all the proceedings should be fair. Um, now, as to the involvement of the United States, with Malayu win. That, that's going to take years. So I don't think that's something he needs to worry about. Kibuloy's lawyer, meanwhile, claims his client did not set any conditions and only made requests. That's despite acknowledging that he has not been in direct contact with Kibuloy since the arrest order was issued. Request. Let's place it in proper perspective. You, you want to... Ang interpretation ng tao, uh, ang presidente, sino ka ba? Eh, mm. You are an ordinary citizen. Who are you to mm. uh, state or uh, give conditions to me? Tama naman yun. Pero... Tama naman yun. Pero wag naman natin kalimutan na lahat po ng citizens ng Republika ng Pilipinas ay pwede pong mag-request sa pang Sige. Gusto namin isabi na mm. uh, yun po ay mula sa kanyang, uh, mula ka sa kanyang uh, uh, dibdib na i-request niya doon kung pwede lang kung pwede kay lang. President uh, Marcos mm -hmm. na baka pwede makonsider na uh, may assurance naman hmm. na hindi siya ipasa sa America. United States of America mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. uh, while he is facing the cases in court. In a recorded voice message <laughs> aired on dick. Saturday, Kibuloy stated that he will only surrender if the President, Department of Justice, and the National Bureau of Investigation will issue their written guarantees, stating that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Central Intelligence Agency, and the U.S. Embassy will not interfere in his Spoken cases. Like Simpling kaso lang po yan. Napakasimple. Kung wala po, uh, nangingyalam ang bansang puti, Aharapin ko po lahat yan. Napakasimple po ng mga kasong yan. Napakasimple po niyan. Kaya lahat na, pang, na ginagawa nila sa Kongreso, sa Senado, puro po yan patibong. O hindi ko alam kung ang 2 million dollars, which is 110 million pesos, nasa kamay na ng mga atat na atat na ito uh, na, uh, so si... na maging award si... nila. Kaya atat na atat silang na, ako ay kanilang matampot, mahuli. Senator Lisa Ontiveros, who led the probe on Kibuloy's alleged abuses of his followers, meanwhile dared Kibuloy to surface. Tumabas ka na sa lungga mo. Tumabas Total, ka na. nagpapa-interview ka surrender, naman sa mga vlogger. Magpa-interview ka na rin sa amin sa Senado. Kung totoong matapang ka, ulitin mo lahat ng mga sinabi mo tungkol sa Senado. Dito sa Senado. Make your words of record. Record your shameless audacity yep. in history. Patunayan mo, ganyang pa rin kabastos ang mga salita mo pagkaharap mo na kaming mga senador. Hindi ka namin uurungan. 
Vice President and Education Secretary Sara Duterte says it's up to the pastor to face the charges against him. Maganda yung development na meron ng kaso na nasa tamang hmm. forum, uh, nasa tamang forum, nasa tamang forum ng mga kote. Ngayon, kung ano man yung desisyon uh, ni Pastor Kebuloy na gagawin niya ay personal na niya na desisyon yun. Police tracker teams are still unable to pinpoint Kibuloy's whereabouts, but they believe Kibuloy is not armed and dangerous despite having more than a dozen firearms registered <laughs> under his name. Commercials, commercials, so, Pwede po ba natin siyang i-consider na armed and dangerous? For now, hindi pa po because uh, wala naman pong indication before na naging makahas po si uh, Pastor Kibuloy at uh, wala mm -hmm. naman po tayong namonitok so far na siya po ay nagme-maintain po ng... Uh, private arm uh, group or private army. Sherian Torres, ABS-CBN News. So, uh, this has been uh, the, the news for quite a while now. And, uh, yeah, They need to uh, make Kiboloy appear in the Senate. They need to arrest him if uh, he doesn't uh, follow what the Senate is asking. No one is above the law. That's uh, that should be, but sa uh, ginagawa nitong tao to. Well, kita naman natin, di ba? And remember, this is a, a cult head, a cult figure. His theology is whack. And uh, he just... He should just submit to authority. <laughs> favorite uh, Romans 13 is the favorite verse of those. So, <laughs> submission uh, fanatic. So uh, it's time to do the same. And uh, another topic for this time is why should we care about the U.S. Japan Philippines Trilateral Summit. And uh, let's share this video. Okay, this is by Ray Powell, Sea Light Director Ray Powell, and his co host, former U.S. senior diplomat Jim Caruso, discussed this week's upcoming U.S. Japan. Philippines Trilateral Leader Summit with experts guests Chris Johnson and Dindo Manhit. So this is uh, what deters China as the topic. Former senior U.S. diplomat Jim Caruso and I recently discussed the historic in April 11 Trilateral Summit between President Marcos of the Philippines, Prime Minister Kishida of Japan and President Biden of the U.S. We had uh, our first guest, Chris Johnston, as a longtime U.S. national security professional and the current Japan chair at the Center of Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C., uh, with Victor Dindo Manhit, founder and managing director of, of the Strat Days group in Manila. They highlighted uh, the importance of this trilateral initiative in demonstrating a united front against China's assertiveness in the region. So, uh, let's uh, share this. It really matters, especially if you look at it from a Philippine perspective. We had this thinking during the previous administration, the Duterte administration, that the Philippines is simply alone as we try to assert our maritime rights, as we try to step up on our protecting our territorial integrity. 
But we knew prior to the previous government of Duterte that there are coalitions that wanted us to really deal with uh, our aggressive, coercive northern neighbor China from an international perspective. That's why we filed the case. After the filing of the case, now, six years after our victory, we have a president who listened to the Filipino people. When you have nine out of ten Filipinos telling the new president, you need to assert our rights. We are not happy where we are. But still, when you see the commitment of countries, and that is what we'll be seeing next week, U.S. and Japan, to stand with us, to work with us, and hopefully not only at the level of national security, but also in the economic front also. Then it makes ourselves stronger uh, in this part of the region. And in the Philippines also, the top of mind is Japan, the U.S., and you add Australia, are the top three countries that we trust, we respect. So this is very positive uh, initiative uh, with President Biden hosting them in Washington, D.C. So that will be interesting in, on the 11th of April. And uh, I will uh, send this link, this link over at the podcast as I uh, record this. And uh, yeah, that's it for Random Talks, episode two.